Hi there. I'm a parent of an adult child who struggles with addiction and mental illness, and I wanted to share with you how I handle this uh, regularly when these feelings bubble up to the surface. Um, he's been estranged from us for several years, and I get triggered all the time, as you can imagine. So I'm going to give you three ideas and maybe a couple more if you stay to the end. Now you can see this painting I'm doing is a watercolor doodle. I'm calling it kind of like my wandering and letting my hand just flow. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything. I'm just trusting and playing with color. Either way, this is what I am saying for me. This is my therapy. I get into this place of mindlessness where I'm not thinking about anything. And for you, I would suggest going into a place that's quiet as much as possible even if it's a corner of your room without anybody bothering you. And you could also, if you're into sewing, you can do some cross stitching or, you know, knitting, whatever that is. Okay, so the number one thing, and I'm looking at it, this from a spiritual perspective, is I journal. And once I'm in this mindless kind of state, as you can see when I'm doing my artwork and stuff, I am in a different place after I'm done. So I get out my journal and I close my eyes and I breathe, um, allowing my breath to calm me. If you listen to your breath, you won't be in your head as much. You, you can't simultaneously do two things at one time like that. So if you focus on your breath, you can't focus on the other thing. So focus on your breath and breathe slower and slower and you begin to relax. And then you can journal and you ask yourself from the wisdom of your angels and ancestors, people around you, how is this happening or what is the perspective that I need to see? Ask yourself or ask them, give me guidance and open your mind up to that. And I would just write also mindlessly and just, and maybe things will come to you, maybe they won't. Uh, maybe you just need to, you know, write out your pain that's fine, but mostly I want you to see if you can take a moment and channel, if you can, some of that information from your guides that are all around us. I also ask from their perspective. Look at the, pull out big picture, look at the perspective of your child from God's perspective. What do they think about the situation? Maybe it will surprise you some of the answers you get. The second thing is visualize your child surrounded in a warm healing light because we can't control them right there's nothing we can do in the moment we want to save them but we can't um, what you can do is imagine them surrounded in a warm golden light imagine them being loved by god their higher power you from afar whatever it is you feel comfortable with and send that to them and imagine them and feel it in your heart and love them from afar. And then the third thing is ask yourself a few questions. Have I gotten them help before? Have I repeated, have they repeatedly overstepped their boundaries when I have gotten them help? Do they continually disappoint you in some ways by doing that? And if you have help, what are the chances they'll do it again? And how would that help them? The reason I ask this is that we get stuck in the cycle of wanting to help and help and save. But until they are dealing with their pain by themselves or their history by themselves or their addiction or their choices, they will not make the choices for themselves. That will be in their best interest because in many chance, in many ways that somebody comes around and saves them. So I want you to accept where they are right now. And once you do that, it gives you a lot of freedom to not have to follow them and ask them what they're doing. And even if they're not speaking to you, wondering what they're doing, thinking all the catastrophizing ways you can. Now, this last couple things may be controversial, but by accepting the worst case scenario as a possibility, not a probability, but a possibility, this may give you the strength of will that you have been uh, dealing with as a parent who wants to keep giving in to their child. 
because the sooner they help themselves, the sooner they will realize they have to do things differently. So by saying no and letting them do the things themselves, they may, just may, get sooner, get better sooner. Very importantly, you need to take care of yourself. Put yourself first and your needs first. This will allow you some freedom to look at what is important to you. Allow yourself to take time and meditate on letting go of your baby. I know that sounds harsh. They are making choices as adults, not as your baby. You can think of it that way. The moment they were a child is now gone, or a young child is now gone. You birth them, they pass through you onto their life. And looking at it from an expansive perspective, big picture perspective, it helped me. So I hope these ideas help you. I'd love to hear what you thought about what I said. I know this is all case by case situation. Every situation is different. These are generalities that I'm throwing out there that I thought might help you. Um, I did, as a parent, this is so torturous. And I understand if you're going through this exactly how torturous it is. And so that's why I'm offering these ideas.